Hello and welcome to this blog post. I'm narrator, writer and actor Rebecca McKernan and today I come to you from my living room so apologies in advance for uh, any dogs barking. It's just a bit nicer down here today. The sun's shining and you've got a view of my cookbook shelf which is one of my happy places. <laughs> um, today I am bringing to you the latest in the four book series from Golden Angel, Deception and Discipline. Um, those of you who know Golden Angel's work will know that it's a bit naughty, a bit saucy, uh, quite a strong focus on BDSM and uh, various uh, elements on that theme. <laughs> and the Deception and Discipline series focuses on four feisty friends and their adventures in trying to unearth a secret, a secret a traitor uh, to the British crown. It's set in uh, 19th century England. So this is book three uh, and focuses on Lily. I'm going to read to you the blurb off the back of the book. Will his daring debutante rescue reveal the traitor to the crown? Lily Davies' first and final, if she has anything to say about it, season in London is mercifully coming to an end. Exhausted by the parade of balls, importuning gentlemen, and the endless dismissal of her suspicions about a certain captain, Lily wants nothing more than to return to her quiet life of country walks and intensive study. Unfortunately for this blue stocking, she is besieged en route to Derbyshire and kidnapped by a highwayman. In London to assist his brother, the brand's new Earl of Talbot, Captain Nathan Jones, is on the hunt for the traitor to the crown. But when it becomes clear that Miss Davies' life is very much in danger, Captain Jones is dispatched to ensure the reluctant debutante travels safely. Escorting her safely home will also give him the perfect opportunity to question Miss Davies about the, the highly dubious gifts she's been receiving from the French. As Captain Jones becomes the unlikely hero to a very uncooperative damsel in distress, he quickly learns that rescuing Miss Davies is only the beginning of his troubles. One unfortunate compromise leaves this pair with no choice but to head for the altar, and the unnecessary distraction just might ruin his opportunity to uncover the, the identity of the traitor once and for all. I'm going to read to you the first few pages of the first chapter. Bear with me. Um, I am reading off of my phone. Sorry about that. Uh, which is a shame. I should really have a copy of this book because Angel, Golden Angel's books are <clears throat> really beautiful, really gorgeous covers. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. Oh, there's there's the first barking dog. Excuse me, Freddie. Ever the professional. Uh, when I record, I do so in a soundproof studio, so there's less telling dogs off in my uh, in my actual audio books. Although I can't claim that there's none. You never know what you might hear. Uh, right, so this is the first few pages of chapter one uh, of Golden Angels. What am I doing? A season for smugglers. Did I even tell you the title of the chapter? The chapter of the book. The, brrr, the title of the book it is a season for smugglers. I'm gonna have to tell tell a dog off again. Sorry, this is real life. Freddie, stop it. Right, chapter one: assassins and highwaymen. Nathan. The season was nearly over, thank God. Captain Nathan Jones felt nothing but relief at the thought as he rode through the quiet streets of Mayfair. Already, Mayfair was much quieter, the streets clearer, and he could go for a gallop through Hyde Park without having to arrive up before dawn, which was what he was doing this morning. Not long after dawn, the sun barely over the horizon, the park was deserted. Not that Nathan would return home once the season proper had ended. He was serving as his brother's proxy in London. Now the Earl of Talbot, Sebastian was overwhelmed at home, trying to undo the harm their father had done to the estates. Sebastian had sent Nathan to London to handle everything he could in the capital, which was fortuitous since Oliver Stuart, the Marquis of Camden and spymaster to the Crown, had also requested Nathan's presence in London. Nathan had worked as an unofficial agent to the Crown for quite a few years now, including when he'd been in the army. He was happy to serve his country. A hunt for a traitor who had attempted to assassinate the Duke of York had certainly spiced up the season. 
though he wouldn't be returning to Brentwood Manor and the family estates, the end of the season would be a huge relief, since it meant his social duties would be finished for now. Until the next season, most of the town were returning to the countryside, where they would host house parties, tend to their home duties, and otherwise occupy themselves. Truth be told, Nathan preferred country life, so if he had to be in the city, he preferred it when everyone else wasn't. I know how he feels. Nathan wasn't often an early riser, even when in the country, but this past week he had been plagued by anxiety. Every morning he'd risen early and gone riding, trying to shake the elusive feeling something was going to happen. That sense of premonition had served him well as a captain in the army, but now it was far more ominous because he was in the middle of London, not a battleground. The season had ended without catching the traitor. He believed they had come close and were getting closer, but somehow the traitor had eluded them. None of his friends wanted to believe Miss Lillian Davies had anything to do with it. They did not believe it. However, Nathan knew from personal experience women could be treacherous, pretending to be one thing, when actually they were waiting for an opportunity to stab you in the back. She was an unlikely suspect at first glance, a debutante, a good friend to the Marquis of Camden's family, a neighbour, in fact. Her father had once saved the Duke of Frederick's life. Yet would that not be the perfect cover? She was smart, too smart for her own good. Nathan had heard the mutterings of gossip that swirled around her, Despite her quiet beauty, she did not have a quiet tongue, which she'd sharpened on several members of the tongue. She certainly had made no new friends during the season, but then she did not need them. Before she had arrived in London, she had already collected an array of correspondents from across Europe, including powerful and influential figures, especially in the French government. They had been unable to prove that the French were backing the traitor, but the French were who Nathan would put his money on. The other most likely option was the Russians, and while some evidence had recently come to the surface to suggest they were the true culprits, Nathan thought it best not to trust either until they knew for sure. Miss Lillian Davies had contacts in Russia as well. Unfortunately, neither the Marquis of Camden nor his son Elijah considered her a suspect. They still saw her as the little girl who had grown up next to them and eventually became a good friend of the Marquis's niece, to Nathan, that only meant she would be the perfect person to turn. Elijah had already told him to drop the subject, and he had, and he had, but still kept an eye out. He was sure the tingle on the back of his neck and his inability to sleep had to do with her, not because of her wide, dark eyes, lithe figure or beautiful face, though she had all of those attributes as well. If he was completely honest, the fact he remained attracted to her, despite his suspicions, stirred his resentment. Uh, so that was the first few pages of Golden Angels, um, A Season for Smugglers, which is book three of four in her Deception and Discipline series. Book four will begin recording really soon um, and will be with you well before the end of the year. So if you haven't listened to book one and two, please do. Uh, but it's not for the faint hearted. <laughs> Uh, it is for the open-minded and those who uh, already have an interest in uh, aforementioned subjects <laughs> um, and a willingness to listen to me narrate sex scenes. <laughs> it's not for you, Mum. And book three is out already for your ear holes now. And book four will be with you imminently. So yeah, get a move on. If you want free codes, I know a lady who can hook you up. So pop me a message and I can maybe get you a freebie only to the first 20 people, probably less, 10 people who send me a message. Um, and in the meantime, thank you for listening. I will be with you again very soon because I have another lovely book to share with you and I can't wait. Um, so have a beautiful day wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and thank you for listening. See you again soon. Mwah.